Welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to this edition of Arizona Real Estate News. We skipped last week as I was traveling, but I am up in the Pacific Northwest, as you can see with all the fishing stuff behind me here. <laughs> and uh, we've still got Pat, what's my McMaster's in the dynamic duo of Jackie and Ruby, Century 21 Arizona Foothills. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. Well, let's talk <laughs> about real estate, shall we? Um, yeah. It's an interesting week, and I, I just want to go through a couple of quick numbers here because things are flattening out and starting to dip in certain categories. And, you know, and I track the seven-day moving average, and, and uh, even while on the road, and you can see it's starting to dip, right, starting to come down as far as number of contracts and the gaps between new listings and um, new contracts is growing. It's about 450 where – before it was nothing. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. And, and the Crawford market index is starting to kind of flatten out just a hair. Um, the days of inventory is still going down. And we're looking at, this one is interesting, closing sales over list price eked up the past two weeks. It went up from a low of 11% up to 19%. 0.3, which, uh, but that was, um, and those are 30 days ago, right? So I don't expect a whole lot of that to happen while rates are hovering around seven right now. And then this is seller paid concessions. Those are also about 30 days old. And they went down to 42% from a high of 51%. And I don't know, tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm I'm thinking that might eke up a little bit this week or next week. With the rates, I agree. Yeah, yeah. it was averaging about nine thousand dollars. Now it's about seventy eight hundred. So I think you know if you're listed, you may want to dust off that. Hey, can I buy down your rate uh, offer? Because I think that's people are going to be asking for it. So mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of where I see the market. And uh, um, you know. Pat, it was your job to keep rates down, and you failed miserably. What say you? <laughs> oh, Pat, well, always, always somebody to blame. Well, it's a, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, hey, look, are. I got blamed for the bad weather at the class reunion. So, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, let me. Oh, hold on a second here. I got a different chart up here. Hold on. Um, here we go. That second again. Here we, yeah, just a second. Have, We're gonna. 1,000. Give me just a second. Yeah. I'm a yeah, sure. Ah, uh, um, shoot. Give me, hold on one second. Let me just, give no, me we're not. Ah. <laughs> what do you got? I just, you uh, got 15 I monitors. 14, you can't I, find 14 I got 14 monitors. Yeah. No, I mean, we had a, we had a sloppy day today. I mean, I, I, I said this last week that we're probably going to have a sloppy week this week. And you, you look at the short term, you know, dismal bond market this is prices this is you know basically we we're sitting at uh, about um 101 106 now we're at 99.33 so we've just seen this downtrend the last you know since um may 11th so it's been kind of like this chinese water torture again in the short term because if, if you pull back i mean it looks bad here the last you know week and a half but i mean obviously we saw this blowout with rates. I, I just think that, you know, my feeling is just watching rates, my two cents worth is that, you know, the, the um, there's a lot going on with the debt. I mean, the debt ceiling, I think that's going to eventually get, you know, that's, that's, that's an old, give me an old story a couple weeks from now. But um, I think, I just think that traders with the Memorial Day weekend, with all the volatility with, you know, regional banks, um, they just, they don't want to be around. There's, you know, they're going on vacation. Um, they're starting early, maybe. And I, I just knew this was going to be a sloppy week. And we saw kind of a, this right here was kind of like a blowout. Um, you know, he said the um, five and a half coupon was down 52 basis points. That's a bad day, certainly. We haven't had a day like that in a while, We've even though we've had some volatility. So I think looking into, you know, next week, I mean, you know, things will settle down. But, you know, traders just don't want to be sitting with positions on some of their, you know, their their bonds. So what what does that mean for next week, though? You tell me. I mean, if you were going to lock, <laughs> are you? Well, I, I would. I wouldn't be. I mean, today was just a crappy day to lock. I mean, um, 
I think we're going to see some firmness here. I mean, you know, we're seeing this uh, stochastic chart right here. That when this gets down, it, you know, everything goes up and down as you can see here. And we're we're at right now we're at a bottom. So I mean, I, we're we're probably going to see some recovery here soon. But you know, with the MBS, with the regional banks, the debt, you know, you, you, once again, you got just choppiness. But the thing of it is, if you pull it out a year, a year, you know. We got this little channel that we're stuck in. So you know, even though today looked bad, we're still stuck in this channel. It doesn't. There's no nothing forming lo longer term. Does that make sense? We're still stuck yeah. in this channel. Can I ask a question? Two questions. So the first one is, um, I've been surprised to see with the with the chart. I forget what that is. The CME or whatever it is, where you watch what the percentages of of what they think the Fed's going to increase rates again in the next mm -hmm. meeting. And that's really jumped. And so I yep. wanted to get Pat's take on that. Do you think, because to me, I think a lot of it's tied to the debt ceiling. And once they get, but that, that could go on for a week. That could go on for a month. That could go on for two months. I think, the traders are, I, think, I think the traders are, I think the trader, you know, the technical trader, the traders are in the pits and trading. I mean, they know that this stuff is, you know, comes, it's been going on for the last, what they did 80 different debt ceiling changes, whatever it was. And, you know, they just, I think that's a not, a, I mean, it has certainly a lot to do with the stock market. Yeah. It obviously has some, you know, pull over into the bond market, but I think that's kind of like a back in this, back in the ground, you know, back in the scenes, you know, story. I mean, right. You know, and, and I would think that too, because everybody knows they're going to raise the debt ceiling. I mean, it's, it's yeah. obviously not going to go in default. So if everybody knows that, what but between why is it having such an effect on it i well, think you know i mean i don't know if it's just that because from no. the thing i read is that you know the fed chairman's you know all these fed presidents there there's a lot of chatter going on right now where they're basically telling the bond market you know don't be so sure that we're just going to stall we may just yeah. raise we're our work is not done yet so they're reminding them that their work isn't done yet and they're you know they're calling their bluff so they're starting to take them seriously so that's, but I, what I've, uh, that's what I've seen. But I think I think the market, you know, it's, it's like a tug and pull between because I think the markets know that, you know, they have been wrong the last two and a half years. So, I mean, there's just a lot of turmoil. And, you know, there's no rhyme or reason some days. You sit there and scratch your head. And that's why, like, the, on the short term, I look at these charts. If I got somebody that, you know, needs a lock alone, you know, a couple of weeks, it's like, okay, this last 10, 11 days have not been the opportune time to lock alone. Let it firm up because I, I think we're still stuck in this channel, but it, there's a lot of cross currents every day. You got the banks, you got the, the debt. I mean, once we get past the debt ceiling, it's, I, you know, now they're going to be focusing on, okay, are the Fed's going to do it a quarter. I mean, I think they're trying, I think they're trying to flex their, mu they'll probably try to flex their muscles. Up. You know, do they pause? Do they raise a quarter? I, I don't know. Who knows? I mean, We'll probably have a couple of volatile days, but the trend will the trend will definitely show you which way the you know the market's thinking. Yeah, I feel like it's such a diversion because everybody was looking for May tenth, and the numbers, oh, yeah. the well, numbers were coming down, and so you at least they still are. They, they still Barry believes that they still are the rents. I mean, the comparable rents year to year are, are loosening up down you know downward, but he goes you know he goes my my May tenth was kind of thrown in with the fact that you know he didn't. Really, you know, obviously you can't project, but the regional banks, um, right. you know, the regional bank crisis. You know, there's a supply of MBS securities and Treasury securities that the banks have to roll, you know, sell to. Uh, obviously, because if people are moving money around, they have to have <coughs> money to pay. You know, so they'll sell them off. And I mean, Pack West. Obviously, there was un they had a loss. They had like a, they sold a portfolio of like 2.3 billion dollars of uh, securities, you know, at a at a discount. So I mean, there's just it's short-term turmoil. I mean, it's not. I heard one uh, one um, one banking analyst said that you know this is not sy systemic. I mean, he goes, there, "There's probably gonna be more issues," but he goes, "You have to look at their assets, the the deposits," and uh, he goes, "It's not systemic." I mean, if anybody comes, you're probably gonna hear the you know the the head, the banking uh, headlines you know, or the headlines saying you know every bank is in trouble and. You know, it's certainly not the case. I've got a gentleman that's the president of Scottsdale Community Bank, a good friend of mine. He goes, we're not affected. He goes, we're not affected. You know, he, they just started this bank about a little over a year ago, uh, Scottsdale Community Bank, a, a wonderful private, you know, kind of a private bank. 
and um, really a nice niche. But he goes, we're not affected at all, you know. But now he's overcoming. He's trying to overcome all these people that are like, well, you know. I go, he, he, I asked him that because I'm sitting down with him next week, and uh, he goes, you know, people ask, but we're good. Well, um, what are you are you hearing jitters out in the market, ladies? So that uh, are there, are people saying, oh, this is. I didn't expect rates to go up here. Is this bad? Uh, oh, the debt ceiling. Maybe I should wait. Getting any of that? I'm really not. I I'm just as busy with my buyers. Not as many sellers right now. Um, I've got like three listings right now, but um, I'm just as busy with my buyers. Um, but I have three cash buyers that are under contract, so um, not so much on the loan side. But um, I'm not really hearing much about the fear of it. It's just kind of seems like it's the normal rate from, you know, back before we got kind of out of out of whack. Yeah, it, it's uh, um, what about you, Jackie? You got anything? Well, I haven't had one single person say anything. The only thing I have heard is a couple people taking a break because of graduations and the holiday and they just got out of school. And so I've had a few people that have said, about mid June, I'll be ready to start looking again. So they haven't brought. I haven't had one person bring it up to me. Or yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, taking a break going on right now. I know I'm up here in the Northwest and I'm in an RV park, little vacation spot. And I'm, seeing, the break. I'm seeing all the RVs starting to pull in for Memorial Day weekend this morning. Oh, <laughs> well, there went the serenity. <laughs> yeah, and, so, and a lull in the market. That this time of year is normal. It's like yeah. that the only time it didn't happen was, well, actually we did see it even in the crazy well, 2021. But, we yeah. did see that. Well, um, yeah, we see that's how so much yeah. fun, but 2021 we did. 2020, yeah. you know, but it's just normal. So I haven't heard anybody talking about rates. I haven't, but again, that might be lagging to them too. Maybe they haven't heard yet. Probably when the rates come down, I'll start hearing, oh my God, did you hear the rates are seven? No, now they're six and a quarter. Yeah, that's usually the way it works. <laughs> so, so, I mean, two, two to three, four week lag. I do have I do have a pool of buyers that are in that first time home buyer scenario where these rate these rates are unaffordable to them because when they came to me, they were in the threes or fours. Um, and now they just don't qualify. So I keep trying to stay in touch with them and letting them know, you know, we can, you know, buy down the interest rates. There's other options, but those, that group of people have gone quiet They're They are just quiet. They won't respond. They're just kind of like, like, I don't know, disappeared, but I'll just keep reaching out to them and, and, uh, trying to present different opportunities or options for them. But they, well, they are they've probably re-signed their lease. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's Get heartbreaking, honestly. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, we have uh, PCE numbers coming out Friday, aren't they, Pat? Yep. Yeah. I don't know what, uh, I haven't heard any indication on that at all. It, it, it seems, I mean, I, maybe I'm just reading the wrong articles, but I haven't seen, really seen a lot of poo-poo about that. So, I mean. Poo-poo? You know, poo -poo. Yeah, poo -poo. <laughs> That's a financial <laughs> term. A new financial term, term, right. <laughs> It's a very technical financial term, but, yeah. um, <laughs> but uh, how did I come up with that? I have no idea. Um, it's a badism. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> but um, I mean, we're, once again, I just, you look back, you like, so I'm just looking at the short term, like, you know, the deals I'm working on. Okay. Do I lock down? I'm like, you know, the last 10, 11 days, or if I get a contract, I'm going to kind of wait to, you know, I, you know, we're stuck in this channel if you stretch out the chart a little bit further. So, you know. Well, we don't want the market to go bonkers poo-poo, so. No. 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 Poo -poo. Poo poo's not good. <laughs> or bonkers. Or bonkers. None of those are good, but doggone it, those no. are all words. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. so we should have a new title. Is there more poo, poo ahead of us? Yeah, that's right. I'll, I'll make the thumbnail tonight, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, as, as long as the iPhone's got the emoji for that, we can... Uh, yeah, we, we can we can come <laughs> up with that. So I know what I get. Yeah, I can give you, but I don't know if it's appropriate. Well, it's good to catch up with everybody again, and uh, we're back in the saddle. I will see you guys again uh, next Thursday night, and we will see uh, what transpires. Hopefully, rates will 
start to slide down a little bit, or maybe hopefully not. Some people are certainly loving the fact that the market's getting slower and inventory is growing, and that's fine. Um, you know, we're seeing that, but we're only seeing it about 25 homes at a time as far as the gap, because our active listings are, you know, down below 12,000 again. And uh, so nothing's really changing. New construction's doing well. And uh, so waiting for anything to show that prices are going to come down is still elusive. So speaking yeah. of new construction, we just put another new construction in uh, DR Horton and they gave a permanent buy down of 4.9. Wow. Yep. Oh. That's why they're so doing we went well. from looking at $315,000 homes to a $400,000 home. And I think his payment changed by less than $60 or something. Yeah. Nice. Well, that just goes that just goes to show you the power of how interest rates move, how people can either afford something or not afford something. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to be the catalyst. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, gang. Well, we will see you here next week. Thanks for joining me. All, All right. right. Take care. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye. Be safe. Be safe. <laughs> <laughs>